Hello, this is Mike at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to take a look at the Essenthal Game Engine. Now, this is a game engine that's actually been around for a very long time. I've been marginally aware of it, uh, and I've never really looked into it with much more detail. And to be honest, I haven't gone into a huge amount of detail with this engine even now. So this is more of a first look kind of a post, not uh, a review by any means. I do not have the experience with this engine uh, to give you anything more than the basis to comment on it. So do keep that into... Uh, Take that into factor while you're watching this video. This is not an endorsement nor a condemnation of this engine. I simply do not have enough experience with it. But it is, however, a hands-on with it. You see, today they just released a uh, tech demo, or just recently released a tech demo, uh, as you can see right here. And it kind of shows you some of the abilities of this engine, enough to show you that maybe this is of interest to you, especially if you are a C++ developer. Uh, here's the tech demo they did, just to show off some of their more recent graphical um, capabilities. We can zoom in, zoom out, look at various different things. Um, you know, sharp enough look, getting uh, 42 frames per second in a windowed uh, environment here during this scene. And we can go through the various new features that they've uh, enabled and disabled. So here is depth of field. Uh, so you can see the blurring in the foreground as, um, you know, you you move in and away from your uh, camera target. We've got motion blur. You can see it on this guy as he's going around. Let's turn it on and turn it off. We've got ambient occlusion off, and let's do high, so you can see the shadowing, etc. that is done. We'll turn that back to off. Uh, bump mapping, the various different options. We can go to flat versus parallax, etc. Uh, material blending per pixel versus per vertex. Fur shading, uh, as you can see on this guy right here. So it's a pretty graphically capable engine. Um, and this is one that, again, I didn't know too, too much about. So I decided to take a quick look at it. And that's exactly what we're going to today. Uh, you can download that tech demo. It's completely free. Uh, it really just does what I just showed you there. But just to give you an idea of what the engine is capable of doing. Now, if you're interested in it, Essenthal is available at E-S-E-N-T-H-E-L.com. Now, I should warn you right up front, this is a commercial engine, which is a hard sell in this day and age. Um, and if you are going to go ahead and buy it, we'll flip it over to the store here. You can see here are the various different uh, pricing tiers. Uh, there is a completely free demo uh, available. Um, it has some functionality removed. It's what I use today. Uh, it does give you a really good idea of what the engine is capable of. And it also, um, again, it's completely free. And it was a rather small download. So if you are interested in checking things further, do check out that demo. Uh, but then you get into basically a monthly subscription. It's $11 a month or $11.40 a month uh, US. Uh, or uh, let's see, what's the next version up? Uh, monthly subscription does not include source code. Uh, yearly subscription, okay, so it's the same thing. So you can basically save two months by doing on a yearly basis. Or you've got a source code license available for 228 or twice as much money per year US. Uh, so basically it's 11 bucks a month, 100 bucks a year, or 200 bucks a year if you want the source code. I rounded down a fair bit. Uh, this is a C++ powered engine. Uh, going back over here, we go into the what can it actually go back to the info here. You'll see the supported platforms are uh, Windows, Desktop, Phone, Xbox, Mac, and iOS, Android, Linux, and Web. I believe it's actually, is it, where can we download it for? I'm running on Windows. Where's the download? Uh, let's pick this guy. Uh, so the, the engine the tools themselves can be downloaded for Windows or Mac or it looks like Linux, but for some reason it's grayed out. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Uh, but basically it is available for Windows and Mac. So the tools are anyways, uh, just going back to the about for a second. You'll see their key features are you know, high performance, unlimited world size, uh, auto publishing, 100 plus tutorials, 90 documentation pages included, which is actually a, a minuscule amount of documentation. So I'm weird that they're advertising that one that way. Um, they've got a number of videos that show you the, the capabilities, the rendering capabilities, et cetera, of this guy, and a number of videos that basically walk you through uh, the various different parts of it. So creating objects, placing scenes, programming, et cetera. And the programming is going to be the part that people are probably most interested in because this is a C++ powered engine in that your quote unquote scripting is done using C++. Now they've done some of this, they've take care of some of the effort for you. There's a, a bit of auto generation that goes on behind the scenes. They take care of the header file generation, etc. So you can generally just write C style code within your project or you can open in Visual Studio as we will see in a second. I assume the same is also true on Mac OS for opening an Xcode, but I haven't actually tested on Mac OS, so don't quote me on that one. All right, so without further ado, let's jump quickly into the engine. This is the Essential Engine Editor. Um, 
login screen. We're going to go ahead and start with the tutorials that ship with it. And boom, we just opened up the built-in tutorials. Now this is a bit confusing and convoluted at the time, but this is basically your editing environment. And this is a um, all-in-one giganto um, editing to a project template. So there's a lot of different uh, projects within this single solution that we're seeing here. And we'll go ahead and we'll start off with one of the really simple ones. We'll go into graphics, see what we've got going on here. Uh, so image masking. So you see as I open up image mask here, we've got main and this is your code uh, for actually generating um, this project. So we'll go ahead and we'll run this project in a second, but you'll see also I'm going to enable it as our active project. And you see there's a little bit of integration here with, so if you want to drag in types, it's, there's a UID being generated, but you can also automatically generate that UID by basically bringing an asset straight in like so. So there is a small bit of drag and drop to the, all right, did not delete it when I did that. Let me see if I just undo it that way. There is a, a bit of a drag and drop aspect to the code editor. Now what is kind of annoying, and I can't believe that in this day and age they didn't do so. So this is straight up C++ code, but it's taken care of um, the, the the header grunt work in behind the scenes for you. But if I come in here, this is another annoyance of the demo. The demo would periodically ask you if you want to go ahead and buy it. And you got to do a 10 second countdown to say, no, you don't. All right, so let's continue on. So we go logo. Oh, I am getting code completion here. All right, cool. So there is code editing. Um, okay, so this is part of, uh, when I installed Visual Studio 2017, I did not install uh, the XP backward compatibility stuff. Uh, once I did install that, it started working better. So there is code completion right in their editor here. There's a limited amount of um, the ability to zoom up and down, but not for some reason it's capped. Uh, so that's as zoomed in as I can go. So sorry if you want to see things better, don't have an option there. Uh, so you'll see over here, uh, there is the code generated for this particular example. If I want to go ahead and run it, I can just press this play button down here and you're seeing it's firing off the underlying tool chain. So in this case, it's using Visual Studio 2015 or 2017 behind the scenes, but there is our example running. And this is basically how you're going to learn. You're going to learn by going through these various different uh, examples. So let's go to something slightly more complicated. All right, so let's go to demos, earth. All right, let's see what earth does. So go over to the main. There's the code that's actually controlling this, like so. Now, so let's say I had instead wanted to, um, actually, no, we'll go down here. So it's highlighted like so. I can go down here to where the build is and pick the, the build option beside it. You see right over here, I can say open in Visual Studio. And this will fire off my copy of Visual Studio, in my case, 2017. And so on the one hand, we just had that one single file called main. Well, if you look here at the actual solution, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So we go source, there is main. So this is basically, so you'll see your headers are not included, et cetera. When you look over back here in the essential editor, See, they're not shown. But at the same time, we come look down here behind the scenes. Uh, for example, this dot H, this stuff is all just kind of hidden from you. So uh, it's kind of C++ mildly simplified, I suppose you could say. Um, and it's handling things like UUID pointer declarations, etc., for you. Uh, but yeah, that is your straight up code. It can, can be done here and then run uh, this way, or we can head on back over to our editor. Now, the project aside, so that's the coding aspect of this engine. Now instead, let's go take a look at some of the assets here. So you see here's our images, and then as we hover over, we get a preview of what's in the image. Same thing can be done for uh, materials, and you can see them in real-time preview in, in three dimensions. Like so, and if we double-click, we can come in here and do the uh, material editor so we can uh, change things like the uh, color texture, the bump map, the normal map, there are various different attributes like the amount each channel is being applied. And then continuing on for assets, we come down here. So music, for example, you see the uh, attributes of it. I don't know what happens if I double click. Yeah, you see how it was imported. You can test it. Like so uh, various different sounds. And then we get down here to objects. These are the various uh, entities that make up your world. So here, let's go to barrel. Let's see if I can properties on barrel. Nope. Not know why it did that. So you see the, the two attributes that go together to make up said barrel. Barrel will be based on a model. I thought I would get an editor over here, but apparently you only get the scene level editor right here. And then as you click, 
you can see the different materials and properties go together to make that actual object. And we'll come back to this guy in a second. You can also see here animations. So here's various different animations being applied to, uh, let's see, it's the top level model, warrior. So there's your warrior model, and there are the animations for it. Now the UI might not be the most intuitive you've ever seen. You got these quick previews, and if I double click this guy, we bring up the animation editor. So you can set different properties of a given animation, etc. Again, this is not an engine I've had a ton of time with, so I'm kind of stumbling my way around the UI as you're, you're witnessing this. Uh, you got video settings as well. You can see a preview of the video in action. And then we get down here, and this is probably where you're, this is where you would traditionally think of as a scene. Uh, so you can go ahead and create a world and an environment. So let's go ahead and create sample. So here is a sample scene. Um, World navigation over here, you've got control over different things, so I could go into train mode and we can now do a modifier on the train. So let's zoom in here and I'll actually show you that in action. Oh. So let's move that back a little bit. Now let's go ahead and uh, up down. So you can, we can do landscape editing like so, or we can go the other direction using the other mouse button. So, any of your various different options, you can switch over here. This is object, so this is object placement mode. So this is how we bring these entities in and around the scene. Uh, let's go into move mode. We can move things around this way using numeric controls. We got your scale, rotate, etc. And that's basically your world editing environment. We can go to waypoint for setting paths. We could add water. Uh, I don't actually know how to do this immediately, so I'm not going to do it. And we could create pathing for um, uh, your navigation type code. And if you want to go ahead and place entities within this guy, it is as simple as going over here and grabbing one. So for example, here is a club. Let's bring a club into the scene, and there is a club instance in your world. So you do get this built-in level editor, world editor type thing, and there are examples on moving between uh, world, let's see, so I think it was game basics. So you see different things like, uh, there's a day-night life cycle, and this is how you go about doing it. So there's the code that you would use to do day-night life cycle logic. And you can go ahead and run that guy with the play button, with having it active as checked. It will go ahead and try to run the code. Uh, an error with that method. Not sure what's going on there. Let's pick a different one. Let's go to pathfinding instead. And again, this is just firing off Visual Studio in the background for you. And there is your character demo running and something you can learn from. And really that's about the extent that I'm gonna go through it here. I don't have a lot more hands on time with this particular editor. The UI is going to be kind of one of those love it or hate it type experiences. I can see why people would go in both directions. It is very minimalist. And again, your code is straight up C++. So if that's like the world you're trying to work in, uh, this may be perfect for you. Um, this may seem archaic to you. Really, it kind of comes down to what you're looking for in an engine. Uh, if you are interested in Essential, as we saw, we can buy it directly from their store, but they are also on Steam. And you can see it here. I'll link this down below. You'll see the ratings for this guy are very, very mixed. Now, I have gone through a lot of these, and to be honest, in some ways, this is not a product that should be on Steam uh, because it's not something that you can immediately jump in and make sense of. So the people like... Yeah, uh, you know, you got a lot of these recorders. You're not going to be able to judge a game engine in three hours, uh, 0 0.01 hour, uh, 0.03 hour. Uh, you know, a game engine is really kind of, you can't really judge one positively either in 0.2 hours, although some of these might be people that used a simple standalone and then came over to Steam to do their voting. But, you know, for game engine type stuff, take reviews with a grain of salt because you really have to invest fair bit of time with something before you can truly give your opinion on it, which is again why I'm not giving my opinion on it. Just making you aware of the fact that this engine is out there. And I know a lot of people are going to just come in and say, why would you pay for this in the world where X, Y, and Z exist? And I'll admit that question is getting harder and harder to answer these days because some of the options out there are becoming obvious choices, I guess you could say anyway. So um, I can't answer that for you, but what I can do is make you aware that this game engine exists, give you a quick taste of what it looks like, and if it looks interesting to you, perhaps you can jump in and go further, or if it doesn't look interested in you, to you, well, at least you know about another game engine out there that you don't want to use. Uh, not a particularly useful skill, but definitely something new-ish. All right.
Yeah. So uh, that was it. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please, of course, do click that like button. And we cover all kinds of game development related stuff here. So if that sounds good to you, uh, do hit that subscribe button and hit notify so you actually get updated when I do new videos. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. I will see you all later. Goodbye.